We're going to go to the phones. We have the ambassadorial Bob Holt joining Wait, us today. What? what? He is ambassadorial. Uh, that would uh, be defined as of or pertaining to an ambassador. Ambassador is a diplomatic official of the highest rank, sent by one sovereign or state to another as its resident representative. <laughs> wow. And for me, I mean, if I'm looking at the Democrat Gazette sports section as a sovereign, <laughs> then I would look at Bob Holt as the diplomatic official of the highest rank sent to speak to the other members of the SEC. That's why Bob's always on the SEC to coaches teleconference. So, Bob, uh, do you accept the introduction of ambassadorial? Yeah, I, I try to be diplomatic in <laughs> how I go about things, you know. <laughs> Ambassador, I like that. That's a, that's a good one. So I guess we have to refer to him as Ambassador Holt for the rest of the season now. Um, all right, Bob, we got a good one here, Arkansas, Tennessee, uh, this weekend. This is, I guess it's the, uh, the closest, the, the closest betting line as far as Vegas is concerned, but Tennessee favored by two. And I, I guess it, it feels like a surprise to us here. I mean, I think Arkansas probably should be favored at home, uh, even though the defense got shredded a little bit in the air, uh, against, uh, against Texas A&M. I just don't think Tennessee can pass the ball like that. And I think, Arkansas's defense can have a chance to create some turnovers. Let me ask you this. Is this a team that can win a game, meaning Arkansas, if they don't create multiple turnovers per game? Because that's the sense I've had from the first five games. Yeah, well, the offense definitely, I think, took a, took a big step forward at A&M. I mean, the way they ran the ball on a team that had been pretty good against the run. I think A&M was only giving up about 75 yards a game there in the top seven or eight nationally, and Arkansas got over 200 yards. You know, Rakeem Boyd was finally healthy, had a good game, and, uh, you know, uh, Traylon Smith didn't run the ball a lot, but I think I think he was six for 30, so that's five yards of carry, and kind of, a, you know, going in there and spelling Rakeem, and then um, Felipe Franks had a really good game. He had running the ball. He had a good game passing the ball, too, but he had two 28-yard runs. He finished with 91, I think it was. So, yeah, I think that shows the offensive line opened some holes, and those guys took advantage. And But, yeah, I think Arkansas probably, you know, obviously turnovers carried them in those first two uh, wins against the Mississippi schools. They had combined three pick sixes. I think it wasn't a combined, I think, nine interceptions <laughs> and turnovers or 11 or something. So, yeah, I think it would help Arkansas a lot to be in the plus turnover margin. And, and Tennessee's got a minus turnover. They, they've been susceptible. They had two pick sixes against Kentucky when they lost that game, when Kentucky won at Knoxville for the first time since 1984. So I'm not saying Arkansas can't win by not without forcing turnovers, but you'd like their chances a whole lot better. Because that, that, that's been their formula. That's been their recipe whatever you want to call it, to win games this year is, is winning the turnover margin. So I think that's probably something they need to do again to beat Tennessee. I think the teams are fairly evenly matched, um, you know, talent-wise. Tennessee's probably got more. Jeremy Pruitt's a good recruiter. He's been there his third year. Now they've got a massive offensive line. It's pretty good running backs. You know, Garantano, Jared Garantano can be a really good quarterback, but he's been turnover prone, and Arkansas needs to, needs to you know, get him to – probably turn the ball over a couple times. Yeah, well, that's the reason that I think that there would be an opportunity for it there. Um, you know, he's got the history, not just this season, but throughout his career, of putting the ball in harm's way. And Arkansas's secondary, and not just the secondary, linebackers have been uh, around the ball. So it just feels like there will be opportunities. And I also think, I wonder what you, what you think, because we saw what happened the last two years at Arkansas when quarterbacks know that any moment they could be pulled, never felt safe in the starting role. And, and their play was obviously a reason why. It doesn't all go on the coaches. But a big reason is that I think they never felt secure in their starting, in the, in, in the, in the position. I wonder if Garantano feels the same way. Here it is, his fourth season in Knoxville halfway through that fourth season and it wasn't until yesterday afternoon that i guess everybody else knew that he would be the starting quarterback it just doesn't seem like your usual senior season yeah i think he started 30 something games and of course last year um you know he got yanked um or put on or benched i guess you'd say but then he came off the bench and played pretty well so he he's a talent guy it's obvious that's the guy jeremy pruitt wants to play 
You know, reading Jeremy Pruitt's comments to the Tennessee media, they talk, or he talks about, you know, Garantano being the best guy in practice. And, um, you know, you want to reward guys in practice. Talks about, hey, the players all know who the best guy is. But there really isn't anything a whole lot more discouraging than turnovers and pick sixes. And, you know, he threw those two picks against uh, pick sixes against Kentucky in the first half. They pulled him out. They put a, another quarterback in, and he threw a pick, like, immediately. So, And then Garantano went back in. But, um, you know, what Jeremy Prude has indicated is that, you know, this, you know we're going to play the guy that gives us the best chance to win. They feel like that's Garantano. But, obviously, if he goes in there and, and you know, is struggling and turn the ball over, they'll, they'll probably make a change. They've got a five-star freshman sitting out. His name escapes me, but not sitting out. But, you know, he's, he's on the roster. And a lot of fans that probably are clamoring for him to play. But, you know, however many stars you got next to your name, you're still a true freshman. And this would be an SEC role game. So I'm sure Jeremy Pruitt and Jim Cheney, their offensive coordinator, used to be at Arkansas. They, they're not real anxious to throw a, a true freshman into an SEC road game against, you know, in, in what essentially is kind of a pick em game. Speaking of Bob Holt here on halftime, Bob, you kind of talked about the, the short well, leash that Garantano may be having for this ball game. Do you think, I mean, just a gut feeling, do you think we'll see two quarterbacks play for the Volunteers this coming Saturday night, or do you think it's going to be the Garantana show barring something catastrophic happening? Well, I think, yeah, I think barring some catastrophic, that he would he would be the guy that they'd stick with because you know, he's by far the most experienced player. He's had some really good games. You know, he's had some great games. He's he's thrown for a lot of yards and a lot of touchdowns, um, but he's also had, you know, some of those pick sixes in there and some just some head scratching plays. You know, he got booed at Neyland Stadium that Kentucky game. That, that's never a good sign when your quarterback gets booed um, by the home fans. Arkansas, you know, some of that happened in Arkansas too with, with some of their struggles. Not not a lot, but a little bit. I think that happened with Cole Kelly, if I recall, or at least they were booing the fact he was playing. I mean, I guess you can split hairs on if they were booing him or booing Chad Morris for keeping him in the game or however you want to put it. But, um, yeah, I think they, you know, if you're Tennessee, you want Jared, Jared Carantano to go in there and play well and, and be your guy. Yesterday here on Halftime, me and Phil, we were talking about our defensive and offensive MVPs for through about the halfway point of the season. Phil went with Jalen Catalan just for the, the simple fact of the, the gaping hole that you saw defensively when they played Texas A&M a couple last weekend. How big of a difference do you think, though, he'll make this week? Because I think this is a crucial time for this defense because I think you're going to see Arkansas in a similar man-to-man defense and maybe, maybe in a sense, force Garantano to throw. How big of a difference do you think Jalen Catalan having him back in that defensive backfield will make for this defense this coming Saturday? I mean, it makes a huge difference. I mean, you know, he's a very physical safety. I mean, some hits he lays out on people. So he's really strong in run support and in tackling, you know, receivers when they catch the ball. And he obviously had a pick six. I think he's forced a couple fumbles. But very physical safety. I mean, to me, he's in the, the mold of a Steve Atwater and, and Ken Hamlin. You know, he brings a hammer back there. Obviously, he can't hit people, you know, like he did 30, 25, 30 years ago. And, and I agree with Sam Pittman. I don't think that was a dirty hit he had the other night. They got him ejected. But, you know, I think it was targeting, you know. But, but, you know, the offensive player lowers, you know, his head and shoulders. The defensive back wants to make the play. You know, targeting can be a very tricky thing for a, a defensive player to negotiate. Um, but, uh, yeah, that was a huge loss for Arkansas for, and for it to happen early in the game. The good news for Arkansas is, you know, since it happened in the first half, then, then you know, he missed, then he doesn't have to miss any of this game. Um, but, um, yeah, it'll be great for Arkansas to have Catalan back, and he's a he's a big, uh, you know, part of that defense, obviously, without a doubt. I want to ask you real quick, too, I mean, it was the NFL trade deadline's passed, and you're, I know you're a big Green Bay Packer fan. Do you wish your Packers would have made a few moves heading into this coming Thursday night and had to hopefully to make a Super Bowl run? Yeah, I kind of wish maybe we hadn't drafted a quarterback who's not going to play for five <laughs> years in the first round, you know. I mean, and I know drafted Rodgers late in the first round. Um, how many years ago that was, 2004? What, I can't remember the year now. That that was really good because the Packers had him rated right, like as a top five guy. And then when the 49ers decided to pick Alex Smith, you know, 
uh, the the other teams that were picking just weren't in the market for a quarterback. You know, everybody remembers watching ESPN. They keep showing Aaron Rodgers sitting back there in the green room, you know, and it's like, you know, excruciating for him. Finally goes to Green Bay at 24, I think it was. It, was, it turned out to be a great pick, and he played behind Brett Favre for three, four years, whatever it was. But, um, I mean, you got a player – you know, who's still in his prime. I mean, I think Aaron Rodgers is 36, so he's, you know, he's not 29 or whatever, but you feel like he's still got three or four good years left in him, kind of Tom Brady, you know, like, and that he's still playing at a very high level at an advanced stage. And, um, you know, if you think about the Packers, you know, who I love, but they never pick receivers or running backs or, you know, sometimes they'll pick linemen high, but, you know, you feel like, hey, let's put some more pieces around this guy you know, because if he's won a Super Bowl, and that's great, but he probably should have won about three Super Bowls or something. And um, you sense his frustration. And, um, yeah, I didn't really get that move on draft day. Um, you know, and, yeah, it's, it is disappointing. But, yeah, I wouldn't necessarily want the Packers to go up, you know, like a first-round pick for a so-so receiver. It, um, you, know, uh, you know, Cobb is the guy that was, was with, them and was very productive, you know, the former um, Kentucky player, Randall Cobb, and I, he would have, I think he would have been a good guy to pick up, but it didn't happen, but, but yeah, it's frustrating, I'm sure it's frustrating for for him, and as, as a fan, it's frustrating that they haven't done a better job of um, putting, you know, some more pieces around It's great that they get some of these free agent guys, and they turn out to be pretty good players, that, that speaks well to scouting and development, but, you know, a, a, It'd be nice, like like it'd be nice to be one of these Alabama receivers in Green Bay or something, you know. Well, one of these days. Last thing here, Bob. Um, you know, you've covered the Hogs for a long time, so you remember what. I, I, I kind of think like we forget <clears throat> that Arkansas Tennessee used to be a, a pretty good rivalry there when Arkansas joined the SEC, and you had those legendary games in the late 90s. Of course, Tennessee's program was at a much different level then, and I think you could say Arkansas's program too. Um, but this used to be an annual game, and I know everybody used to get really, really fired up for it. But you know, they they they, they got they got fired up a lot more for the Tennessee rivalry than they did than they do for the Mizzou rivalry. And it just what do you remember about what the build up to those games were like when Tennessee was a national contender and and, and Arkansas was still sort of newish in the SEC? Well, yeah, they played annually, like you said, and they they were sort of, you know border. States. Obviously, Knoxville's a long ways from Fayetteville, but um, yeah, I remember that. For obviously, nobody, if anybody was around back then, 1992, that was Arkansas's really first signature win in the SEC. They go into Knoxville, Arkansas's struggling. They have an interim coach with, with uh, Joe Kynes. He did a really good job that year after they fired Jack Crow. You know, Barry Lunny Jr. makes his first start as a true freshman. Tennessee's ranked fourth, I think. And they go into Knoxville and beat them 25-24 in a last-second tied right field goal after a big comeback. And I remember being in that end zone because you know that's when we, you know you went down and and did the interviews uh, you know in the locker room back, back in the day. And uh, I remember being in that end zone and watching that field goal go through. And you never heard 90,000 people so quiet. I mean, Arkansas had a couple 3,000, whatever how many fans? Maybe it was 5,000. I don't remember. But um, you heard those Arkansas fans, those Tennessee fans, it was just dead silent. And that was really the beginning of the end for Johnny Majors at Tennessee. He was fired at the end of that year, and Philip Fulmer took over. And, of course, you know, you remember the 98 game uh, when it looked like Arkansas was going to knock off number one Tennessee. And, you, had, you know, Clint Sterner stumbled and fumbled, and, and Tennessee had a pretty improbable comeback. And then the next year, um, you know, it was a redemption game for Clint Sterner. He threw the late touchdown pass to Anthony Lucas, and they won by the same score, 28-24. The Tennessee had beaten them. And you remember the, the 6 OT game. You know, people remember the 7 OT games with Ole Miss and Kentucky, but in 2003, I think it was, or maybe it was 2. I'm getting old. Um, they had the 6 overtime game with Tennessee. Um, the Tennessee held on one. They, they, they went on a wheel route. J- J- Jason... Um, Oh, who's the, the tight end for the Cowboys forever and ever? I'm, Jason Witten? Yeah, Jason Witten caught, caught a touchdown on a wheel route to win it. And I, I remember, I don't remember seeing this, but I remember doing something on the series. And um, uh, Russ Brown was an offensive lineman for Arkansas. They, they played Peyton Manning, obviously, was 
was part of those uh, 1990, you know, uh, mid-90s games. And they played Little Rock one year, and Russ said he was out there, you know, walking around the field you know, before pregame warrants and at War Memorial Stadium. He sees Peyton Manning come, and he said he basically had, like, a couple state troopers with him like the coaches do. He said that was the first time I'd ever seen a player with bodyguards. But he was Peyton Manning, you know, <laughs> so, wow. so he got bodyguards. So, yeah, just a lot of history of that. That game is. I think it's a shame they don't play every mm-hmm. year, because um, because that was that was a really good rivalry. And yeah, you're right. I think Arkansas fans got a lot more excited for Tennessee than than they than they do for Missouri. But I, I keep saying it, Missouri keeps beating them. So Arkansas fans ought to get excited about that game and wanted to beat Missouri. And I think having Barry Odom and some of his Mizzou guys on this staff will probably add you know, a little spice to that rivalry this year. I would think. Bob, appreciate you, man. We got to run. Thank you. Talk next week. Thanks, Bob. Okay, you guys take care.